Hey everyone, we are live at the Pace Studios right now with J.D. Simo. J.D., it's great to see you again, man. Man, it's great to be back. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, great to see everybody again. Um, yeah. um, Adam, Adam Abrashoff on the uh, on the drums in the back. This is very good to true. See you again, and uh, Andrea Bush. It's great to see you. You were here two months ago or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it feels like a re- like a reunion here. It is. Uh, and I am linking my people up <laughs> right as we speak because you know we're I'm all together I'm an all together kind of cat, you know I know you can dig it, I know you can dig it. Look at that, look at that, look at that multitasking like a mofo. <laughs> yeah, all right, dude, it's important, man. If people don't know what's happening. It's uh, we may as well may as well stay we done home. done it. Yeah, we done done it. All right, um, can't, so off off at eleven off is 11. the record which is coming out March first. And are you doing are all three songs you're doing today off that record? Or are you guys going to jump around? Um, in time? We're probably going to jump around, but we'll play a few off the record, obviously. And uh, yeah, the first song we'll do here is a is an old uh, Slim Harpo song. And why I always like to I always like to talk a little bit. I love um, Slim Harpo was on a label called Excello down in Louisiana, and uh, they had these guys, you know, like Light and Slim. And Lazy Lester, I mean, it's like, I want to hang with those guys. It's like, what is it, a bunch of boxers, you know? So anyway, this is an old tune of his uh, from the 50s that we do a little bit different. And uh, it's called Got Love If You Want It, you know? So, all right. One, two, three.
Man, that Song is one. fun. I like it. I like your band. I like you guys a lot. This is uh, um, man. I dig you, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, dude. We're all do- we're all we're doing, got doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah. You look more related to me than my actual brother looks like me. Me too. Me too. I Maybe wonder if my brother looks that. like your brother. Maybe there's something to that, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, dude, I could tell <laughs> instantly after ten, you know, five seconds of having met you that uh, we were brothers. Yeah, man, we were brothers for life. Yeah. I um, can you talk a little bit about the um, uh, no answer you give would surprise me at all because there's like so many influences and styles that go into your playing. I mean, the psychedelic rock, the hard blues rock, uh, jazz fusion. I mean, if you said John McLaughlin, that wouldn't be surprising. Can you talk oh. a little bit about your heroes and who who really does it for you? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, I think that. I mean, I talk to you all day, man. So, but. As far as, yeah, on the jazz side of things, at least on guitar, yeah, I mean, people like McLaughlin when he was playing with Miles early on, you know, Bitches Brew, that yeah. that in general is a big influence, I think, on all of us, um, huge, that sort of pre-fusion um, when the outsters, you know, Ornette Coleman, um, Wayne Shorter, not really a lot of guitar players, you know, mostly horn players, Youssef Latif, all that stuff is really, really big for me. Um, in the psychedelic world, there's, you know, there's all the things I think you would imagine, you know, the Grateful Dead and, and, um, uh, the Allman Brothers band and, and you um, got your, uh, the, the, uh, was it's called the Allman, the Allman, oh, the Allman Betts Allman band, band, right? Yeah, and we're those doing guys a tour later you. this year. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, all that stuff. But then on the, the other side of the coin, the psychedelic side of like R&B music, like Isaac Hayes is a real big influence, um. And uh, Funkadelic, uh, you know, before Parliament, you know, the first three, four P- Funkadelic records with Eddie Hazel um, playing guitar, you know, that's a big, big thing. I know, you know, for Adam and me both. Uh, and uh, and then with the blues stuff, I mean, it's, uh, you know, uh, mostly, especially now, like it's changed because, you know, you start with B.B. King or Freddie King or, you know, the more, you know, or you hear Eric Clapton or something, you know. Yeah. But now for me especially, it's like people like Lightning Hopkins um, is a real big influence. And then there's a, a guy from Chicago that didn't really... There's two guys from Chicago that are hugely influential to me. Earl Hooker is one, um, which when I play slide, um, there's a lot of Earl Hooker influence. And then there's a guy named Magic Sam that, um, that I love a lot too, which actually I think we'll probably play a Magic Sam song right now. Cool. Um, well, I'm stoked but, to ask that question because those are two new ones for me, Earl Hooker and, and Magic Sam. Well, so the, the first thing time with Earl, see, dig the thing, man. So, like, Earl, you know, like, a lot of slab players play in, in open tuning, you know. And Earl Hooker, like, people give Dwayne Allman credit, rightfully so, late in the 60s for, you know, <laughs> for playing in standard tuning some of the stuff with the Allman Brothers band. But Earl Hooker was doing that in 1952, man, like, you know, and he was like a headhunter in Chicago that just played clubs and stuff like that. And he only made records later on in the 60s before he died of tuberculosis. And he's just so funky, man. He made a, there's a record, uh, if there's one Earl Hooker record, there's a record called Two Bugs in a Roach. Can you dig it? And it came out in 68. Are you asking me if I can dig it, or is that what the record's called? No, no, no. I'm asking if you can dig it. Two Bugs and a Roach is, <laughs> right. is, is the name of the record. I halfway wish that it, would, that it did have a comma and a question mark in it I also. wish it did. See, man? <laughs> for the deluxe edition. That's right. You know? So anyway, but uh, Two Bugs and a Roach is my favorite. And Lightning Hopkins, we'll do it. Actually, yeah, we'll do more than three tunes, because screw it. We're having fun. Amazing. We'll, we do, got we'll do like a Lightning Hopkins thing in a little bit. But at, right now... We'll do a Magic Sam thing. And so Magic Sam, he was from, he was from Mississippi, but he moved to Chicago in the 50s. And he was, uh, uh, he was like the young wonder kid. He was like 17 years old in the 50s, and he, he couldn't get a record deal. You know, could nobody, uh, you know. And he got drafted to go to Vietnam in 1960, and he, didn't, he wouldn't go. And so they arrested him, and he actually went to prison for multiple years for resisting the draft. And when he got out of jail, he was real broken down and sort of discouraged. And all his friends, when he was in prison, became big stars, you know. And he, uh, he, got, a, he got a record deal late in the 60s and made a record called West Side Soul that I love a lot. And then uh, 
He was just starting to get going. All the hippies found him, and then he died of a heart attack at 32 years old. Oh, man. That He's sucks. That a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So it was from Magic Sam. This old tune of his called, uh, 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 what, what's it called again? <laughs> just a little bit. All right. Ready? One, two, three, Sam. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, can we talk a little bit about uh, about what you have coming up? I know, so you're uh, the um, Almond, fuck, what's it? The, the Almond, Almond Bats band so supporting yeah, you, well, and then you're going out on the road with uh, with Tommy Emmanuel too, right? Yeah, that's true. A ton of, like, he was just here last week or two weeks ago, maybe. Um, and yeah, I feel man, your presence. Yeah, you guys yeah. will have uh, plenty, hopefully, plenty of time to to geek out and. Uh, oh yeah, man! You guys are two of my my personal favorite guitar players. You and you and Tommy Emmanuel. It's gonna be a, oh, man. an I'll awesome series of shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. No, it's going to be fun. We started um, this tour that we started two days ago runs up right up until the first week of March, which is when I leave to go do, yeah, three weeks with Tommy in Europe. And then they join me and we do another two and a half weeks in Europe. Is he is and John Knowles along with him? I or think is it, right is, now. Yeah. Not for what I'm doing. Okay. But John is a sweetheart of a man. Dude, he, he, it was the two of them who he's, came in he's here a couple Yoda, weeks man. ago. Yeah, yeah. He's that was. He's uh, he's the essence amazing. of sweetness and graciousness. And so, no, I'm looking forward to it though, because me and uh, Tommy had me out to do a tour last year, and I'd never stepped out on f- stage alone to play, you know, solo, you know. So it's like, yeah, just get out and why don't you just do it for the first time in front of the best on the planet ever to walk to do it, you know. Uh, but it was really liberating and freeing, and it was really fun. And so, you know, they asked if I would want to do it again, and I said, yeah, I'd love to. So we'll do that, and then we get back from Europe in uh, April, and then we start the Almond Bets tour, which is the whole month of May, 
And then uh, nice. Those guys. I, I forget where the, the conversation is, but at some point they'll they'll be in here. I'm I'm sure of it. Oh yeah, I'm sure. And they're groovy dudes. I mean, I don't really know them much. Yet. I, I I assure you, I'll know them in six months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but well, that's, that's cool, man. I'm glad that all those experiences are happening. It's gonna oh, be a whole yeah. lot of fun. I'm a road dog, man. I like to play. Yeah. We all do. Yes. So, um, you know. can you can you tell us what is coming up next? Are you going to do one off of yes. off at eleven? I'm going to do. Uh, we'll do a tune right now. This is actually uh, a tune called "Mind Trouble," which is sort of a tribute to Latin and Hopkins. And um, the uh, normally I'd do it on acoustic, but I'll do it on this. And so the thing about um, Latin and Hopkins is, you know, Jimmy Reed. You know, that's the the first thing I ever learned to play. You know. Yeah. And like Lightning Hopkins came along and he started going, you know. He like sped it up and gave it some English, you know. Mm. So this is my sort of take on Lightning Hopkins. This is a tune called My Trouble from the new record which comes out March 1st, off at 11. Yeah. All right.
Thanks much. Man, it sounds oh, great. We do. We got one more. We got one yeah, more for Yeah, yeah, totally. I was, um, I don't know if we got into this last time or not, but there's a whole uh, collection from a club called the Ash Grove, which is, uh, it was like a, a folk and bluegrass venue in LA in the 60s and 70s. And we've got the whole collection from there. And the most represented artist in that collection is Lightning Hopkins. It's just right over in that really? room, right? Over, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. There's a ton of a ton of Doc Watson, a ton of uh, of Lightning Hopkins, and it's. I mean, hearing when when we're talking about influence, it's like. I mean, this is such an appropriate room to from you playing in front of the Bill, like the Bill Graham room. archive. There's so much Almond Brothers in here. There's so yeah. much Grateful Dead I'm in excited. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And all. All the, the jazz influences you're talking about too. I mean, there's there's Mahavishnu tapes in here. There's uh, um, the last show the John Coltrane Quintet ever played is sitting on a tape over really? there. Yeah, it was at the Newport Jazz Fest in 1966, and the, the original tape of it's just sitting right over there. So it's <laughs> yeah, all the friendly ghosts that we are surrounded Man, with I'm, here. I'm are, so glad that none of that stuff got put in a shredder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, you know, in the world that we live in, you know, it's just great. You know. I mean, I love it. I like, you know, I mean, that's why I love hanging out with y'all because it's like I'm a record geek, you know, like I stream music and I buy vinyl. That's how I listen to music. Yeah, me know? too. My turntable is sitting right here. That's it. And so, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a beautiful time we live in, you know. I just can't believe nowadays that, you know, you think about, like, me growing up in the 90s and the early 2000s, like what it would take to like track down some obscure record or to track down some something that somebody hipped you to, you know? And like now, I mean like every day I open up my Instagram and like I'll do a post about something and people will ask me like, well, what should, I'm like, just go to my Spotify page, man. Here you go, here's everything right there. And I, that's beautiful to me, you know, because it's really just, everything, even some of the more more obscure I the artists that I have so heard impressed. of. Magic not to, Sam, give, not to give commercials here, but like I've been so impressed with I've tried to stump, but I, in some cases I have. But like I've been ridiculously impressed with the amount of content that is is essentially kind of out of print. And, you know, like there's a high there's a high res wave. It's not even an MP3, and it's like my geek head starts going, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, right on, you know? Yeah. So I, yeah, that's what I do all day long. Can you, uh, can you tell us what is, what's the fourth song you're going to play? Sure. We're going to, we'll close it up with uh, a, uh, a song from the new record called You Need Love, and we'll take this out a little bit. And uh, this is what we're, uh, was released out. I think this is the, it's the preview track as well, right, when that comes out. So... It's uh, it's a tune called "You Need Love," and and that's all we need, right? All right. But there's plenty in here. That's right. And hopefully, all you out there. So I really appreciate you having us. So let's do it.
Thank you, Pace Day Trotter. Yeah, thank you. That was great. Uh, it was great to see everybody again. JD, um, Andrelea, Adam, thank you so much for coming and doing this. Uh, sounded great. Have a great show tonight at Rockwood. I'll probably see you later on tonight. Let's Rockwood do it. Musical Hall, nine, stage two, nine o'clock. Yep, that's it. That's happening. And then, uh, yeah, all the tour dates are up at... Yeah, at uh, jdsimo.net jdsimo.net and uh, man have a have a great trip with uh with Tommy and uh with the uh with the the um with uh, with bets. everybody with yeah. everybody yeah enjoy come it come see us folks dude and best of luck with off at 11 that's coming out on March 1st and it's that album is exactly what I want it to be I enjoy it a lot it's just right up the middle rock Thank and roll you. music Thank also you. I meant to say the internet wants you are you familiar with electric octopus by any chance yes i am you know those guys the internet wants yeah. you guys to get together we cool. We do need to get together. Yeah. Because we are very like minded. Yeah. <laughs> Seemingly. It's um, man, thank you again so thank much. Thank you for doing so this. much and God it. bless you. And thank you all for doing what you do. Because I'm a fan of this show. I watch it and y'all rock and in the in the world as it is, you're a beacon of light. So God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. All right.